Suppose you wish to find a sinusoidal function that will model a data set. The calculator can do this when the trigonometric function is a sine wave, and this video demonstrates how this can be accomplished. Note that this command always uses radians in the output regardless of the mode setting. And we'll begin with the following data set here. Now if you notice, my x coordinates are in sequence from 0, 1, 2, all the way up to 12. So I'm going to use the sequence command to input these values. So I'll go ahead and do stat and then edit. And I'm going to highlight L1 and I'm going to go ahead and start uh, introducing the sequence command by going under list and then ops. And I'll select the sequence command here. And I'll go ahead and start typing in the sequence that I want. It'll be uh, a value i and I'll, the variable will be i and it'll start from 0 and it will go up to 12. And here we can see the numbers 0 all the way up through 12 uh, are now in L1 and these are the x coordinates of my points. Now I'm going to go ahead and enter in the y coordinates. So we'll go ahead and enter those guys in. Uh, 9.8 being the first one, and then 11.4, and 11.6, etc., until we get to the end. Okay, now that we have entered in our data lists, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at the scatter plot. So we'll go ahead and do that by hitting second and then y equals. We'll go ahead and turn the first plot on. We'll select the scatter plot option, that's the very first one under type. We'll go ahead and use L1 as the x list, and then L2 as the y list. And we'll go ahead and use the square as the mark so it's pretty easy to see. Now to size up my window, I'm going to use the zoom stat command. And here we can see the scatter plot. And it does appear to resemble a sine wave or a cosine wave. So we're going to use the synreg command to fit a sine wave to this data. So we'll hit stat, go over to calc, and scroll until we get to synreg. It's usually toward the bottom. We'll go ahead and tell it to use L1 for the X coordinates and then L2 for the Y coordinates. And we're going to tell it to store the results in the Y1 slot. So we'll go under VARES, uh, YVARES function and select Y1. Okay. Here we can see the function right here and the coefficients A, B, C, D listed out there. And let's take a look at a plot of this along with the data values. Okay, so it looks like our plot fit pretty well. Now the synreg command has a lot more to it than just this uh, basic command. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the full version of the SYNREG command in order to possibly optimize the fit. And here's how this can be done. The full SYNREG command is the number of iterations that's listed first, the X list, the Y list, the period, and then where you want to store the results. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this full command version and see what differences result. Now the SYNREG command uses an iterated least, least squares method to fit the data. And this implies that we may specify the number of iterations. The number of iterations must be a natural number between 1 and 16 inclusive. And the default number is 3. We, and we can also adjust the period used in the iterative least squares method. And a guess as to the period can be done in two ways. You can plot the data and use trace to determine the distance between x coordinates from the beginning to end of one complete cycle, or you can plot the data and use trace, determine the distance between x coordinates from the beginning 
to the end of n complete cycles and then divide this total distance by n. So in this next part we're going to use the full command to adjust our sin reg fit. We'll use the maximum number of iterations and we'll also use 2 pi divided by b as our period where b is computed from our previous attempt. And this is usually considered an optimal fit for the calculator. So we'll go ahead and do second in mode. We'll quit go back to the home screen. Then we'll hit stat and calc and go back to the sin reg command. And this time we'll go ahead and type in 16 for the maximum number of iterations. And then we'll tell it to use L1 as the X list. And then L2 is the Y list. And then we're going to do 2 pi, and you can get pi by hitting second and caret key, divided by B. Now the B can be found by hitting uh, the VARES button and scroll down to statistics. Then you can scroll over to EQ and then you can select B from that list. And we'll go ahead and store this result in the Y2 slot so we can compare the two results together. We'll go ahead and do a graph. Okay, we can see there's virtually no difference in our previous attempt in this optimal attempt. So let's look at the functions and see what the differences are. So we'll hit y equals. And here we can see that there's a slight adjustment in the a value. And again, there will be another slight adjustment in b, c, and d as well. So here we have 3.09 for our first attempt. In the quote-unquote optimal attempt, we have 3.09787680899. So there are some slight variations uh, between our first attempt and this optimal attempt. But for our purposes here, these things are virtually the same. So if we look at the graph again, we can see that there's no difference. And this is how you can use the SINREG command to fit data that appears to be periodic with using a sine function on the TI-8384 calculators.